Creating depth of field in uh, Cinema 4D is relatively easy, however there are a few settings you need to enable in order to actually have a depth of field effect over your project. Um, and these are, if you're new to the program, relatively hidden. Uh, but just before that, um, I want to get into um, a few examples of depth of field. So depth of field, uh, quick Google image search we can see this is a good example okay let's view the image so you can see here this uh, monk this teddy is in focus and the background is completely blurred out um, I don't know if you can see it too well on the video but you can see the fence post here each one as it goes along gets even more blurred um, than the previous and this is because it's further away so it's having a um, greater impact on the, the the blurriness um, of the object and here you can see um, this is with no depth of field really the the fence post here is just as sharp as everyone uh, going down obviously gets a little bit blurry just because it's further away and there's less pixel and the, the pixelation of the of the photo and the compression and all that but uh, generally speaking this image is as sharp all over as it is um, when it was taken whereas this one has this blurred background put in. So um, why you would want to do this um, really in, in, in Cinema 4D is to give your your project, your environment, that sense of scale, the sense of uh, depth there that you would normally associate with in real life. If you um, your eyes work the same way, if you were to focus on something very close, the background is out of focus. Um, if you focus on something far away, obviously the entire thing is in focus. Um, so, a very simple scene I'm going to set up here is just to have um, some spheres. I'm going to change the size. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this for uh, make it easier on the on the program. Um, and obviously, one isn't going to show us anything, so I'm going to stick it into a cloner. So, MoGraph. I'm going to put it into a cloner. I'm going to clone it on the Z axis, so 100, uh, maybe a bit more, 150, and then put the count up to, let's just say 10, that's what I'll do. Right, so I've got uh, 12 spheres, and obviously I'm going to try and put it in a similar setup as that, sort of that, that image we saw where there was those fence posts leading on uh, in a line into the background. So I might stop it here, just exaggerate it a little bit. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. Uh, the viewport on roughly I don't know why I did that how I want my camera to 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 look so what I'm probably going to do is either focus on this sphere here or this sphere here um, or maybe even that one and I want a bit of, I want some blurriness here and I want the blurriness um, obviously into the into the background so once you've got your viewport set up you um, have to insert a camera because if we give this a render now I'll just do a viewport render you can see all these spheres are as sharp as the as the one next to it. So, if I click and insert a camera, it will insert a camera exactly where my viewport is looking. And now, if you, if you want, you can come out of this and you can uh, get a better view on your scene. And it just means you can have more freedom to look around and edit whilst still retaining that original perspective. So, I'm going to enable the camera. So my viewport is looking through the camera by just clicking this little square here. And I'm going to make sure the camera is selected and go to the objects panel. I'm going to change a few settings in here. Um, now if you come to physical, you'll see there's something here called f-stop. And if I just go back to that image, uh, view image, so you can, you can see it's got a number f2 and f22. This is the f-stop. So you can see here f2 and the aperture is wide open. Uh, f22, the aperture is closed. That's just the, the technological workings behind photography and cameras and how that works. Um, you don't need to worry about that too much in in, in a Cinema 4D other than just the number. So you can see in the image we've got a very low number. It gives us a very uh, shallow depth of field. So anything that's in focus is on this very shallow plane. Uh, the larger the number, the greater the depth of field, or pretty much to this point there is no depth of field. Everything is in is in focus as we said earlier so as you can notice this is all greyed out it won't let us change it so what we need to do is go to your render settings 
and under renderer choose physical and you'll see you get an extra um, option here if you click into it you get extra options as well and the first one being depth of field we tick that to enable it and exit out and now we have this option um, not grayed out anymore and we can change the value so you can see here we've got f1 1.1 1.2 1.0 1 all the way up to f22 as we saw in that picture so you've got uh, f2 here and f22 now it does take some playing around with um, so if I put a depth of field of 4 on at the moment and give this a render you can see it doesn't really look much to the eye so let's give this a 2 it obviously is doing something but we can't we can't really see it and again 2 it's not really doing much there's a bit of blurring going on here and here but I'm not really seeing this ridiculous depth of field um, with Cinema 4D you will need to play around with this and if we jump out of the camera um, you can see we have this projection into our 3D scene and you can see a line that comes out from the very centre of the camera and ends up in the centre of what we um, what is the frame uh, what is it called, the, the focal length so if I was to change this to super wide you can see that gets bigger uh, I'm just going to leave it at classic in fact I might even put it to um, a normal lens of 50 just because it gives us a nicer depth of field so if I go back into it um, I may have to tweak the camera around a little bit but that looks looking good from there. Anyway, so we get back to physical. We got we can see you got two, and as I was saying before, this this here you can drag this, and this changes uh, where the focal point is. So if I want the camera to focus on this sphere, I'm going to pretty much move this orange um, block to be pretty much in line. So this this uh, this face, if you will, this um, square is pretty much intersecting this sphere. Now if you have a very very shallow depth of field and you were to put the plane on the on the front of it in some extreme cases the back of the sphere could be blurred out. But we'll play around with it and I'm going to set it to roughly uh, the middle of the sphere. I want it to be pretty much looking at that. Now you can do it this way or you can come into your object panel here you can see we have uh, focus distance it's currently 819 centimeters that's obviously the distance we're setting here so if I adjust this you can see it goes to 448 further it goes to 1000 so I'm just going to go back to 820 that was um, pretty good um, you can also use um, an object to focus now if I choose my cloner well it's going to choose the first one here and I want it to be the fourth um, you could probably click the individual clone, so if I wanted it to be this one, it's not going to allow me. Um, so I'm just going to use the very, in fact we need to clear this, so clear. I'm just going to use this, it's, it's easy enough to use. You drag it to where you want your focal plane to be, and that looks good enough to me. So jump back into camera view, and uh, if we give it a render now, we can start to see again these ones in the foreground are blurred so one two three four this one this fourth one here is the one that's going to be in focus the most and as the spheres go along they get even more blurred now I want I want a greater depth of field here so I'm going to go back to physical and two isn't enough and obviously in that photo two was plenty again you just got to play around with the settings the focal length and the size of the objects and the whole environment does have an effect on this so if I go real extreme and I say 0 0.1 which it will allow me to do, it will allow you to go even further, you could do 0 0.05 um, I'm just going to put it at this because this, this is pretty much one that I know guarantees to give crazy depth of field so it takes a little bit longer to render and these become completely blown out you can see here that fourth sphere, so we've got one, two, three, four, is completely in focus, and the rest are massively blown out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up to 0 0.4, give that a test, and that's something a little bit um, more realistic, a bit more pleasing to the eye as well. And what I can then do is go to the render settings, go to physical, and then depth of field. Once it's been turned on, you've got your sampler quality here, and if you whack this on high, you may have to bear with me a couple of seconds here, but you put it on high it's going to improve in fact what I'll do is I'll do a comparison so I'll run it to the picture view uh, fit to screen so while that's doing um, I'm going to go ahead and change the 
sampling quality to low, just come out of that. So you can see here already we've got this nice, more uh, soft and rounder and more uh, detailed um, blur, blurriness going on from the depth of field pass. Um, so let's wait for this to finish up. Okay, so that's that one, and let's render it out on low. Obviously, it takes so much quicker. So if I just bring this up to full screen, so it's easy for you lot to see, fit to screen. In fact, now we'll go 100 there. So if I cycle between these, you can see we've got this uh, grain, this noise going on. There's not that high quality; it doesn't look as good. And then we switch back to the high sampler, and we've got this real nice soft focus uh, or blur going on. And you can see here the fourth sphere is in perfect focus. So very simple to do, very simple to add, and adds a lot of um, <coughs> dynamic environment around your your image. It gives us this sense of scale, it gives us a sense of position, um, and in some cases it can make it seem like you're zoomed very far in on something, it can make something seem very microscopic, um, so it's a very powerful tool to use.